Hey everyone and welcome to our little live session. We are going to be talking about some of the stuff that comes in the Wilton 55 piece cake decorating set and it's a decorating tip set. So you have 55 tips, there's a wide selection in there so it's a great choice for beginners and there's also a few little extras. You're going to get two standard size couplers. These are one thing that if you don't have a lot already, buying extras of these or getting them as a bonus in a kit is a great thing because I find I always need more couplers and the other thing that comes with it besides a cute little case to keep all your stuff in are two little flower nails and if you're going to use any of the petal tips or drop flower tips these are really handy to have on hand and having extras of these is also a bonus right so the first thing you want to do is make some bags and you need to decide whether you're going to use a coupler with your bag or if you're just going to use it plain now if you're going to use the couplers they're a two-piece assembly, so there's a ring and the larger part that you want to insert down into your bag. And I'm just using some disposable decorating bags, and I've already got them prepped, and I generally just cut the end of the bag so that it's about a half an inch past the insert for the coupler. That means that when you're going to clean up, it's going to have an easier job of getting that out. You see, I can grip the bag and then squeeze that little insert back out. And once you do a few decorating projects, you'll realize why that's a great thing. Because if you cut them even with the end of this insert, you're gonna have trouble getting them out and you're gonna have to do what I call bag surgery, where you cut the ends and the sides of the bags and you have to peel them out and it can be a bit of a mess. But then you just wanna select whatever tip you're gonna use. And these are standard size couplers, so they'll work with these standard size decorating tips and secure it in place with the ring. And these couplers then allow you to change tips, meaning that you can use a bag with a color in it for multiple different tasks in a job, which makes them really useful. There are some larger tips that come in this kit, so if you're gonna use any of those, you'll either need to buy larger couplers or you'll use them directly in the bags, which you can also do with the standard ones as well. And when you're doing this, and I have a large one here that I'm gonna load up, uh, you want to make sure that you're not cutting too much off the end of this bag. So if you need to, you can always insert the tip down so that you can kind of judge where you need to cut. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it started. Because if you cut too far back, you risk kind of uh, the chance that you might rocket your tip out the end of the bag, which is never good. So I'm probably going to want to cut about another inch off of this. And that should put us in a good spot where the entire opening of the tip right, is exposed. There's still a nice kind of like headroom here where you have overlap between your bag and your tip, meaning that it's gonna support the pressure when you squeeze and you don't run the risk of shooting your tip out and maybe squishing frosting all over your project, right? And we'll be ready to load up. So I have some pink buttercream that I've already made up. And this pink buttercream is just a little Chef Master liquid gel deep pink. So just to drop in a couple of ounces, it makes you a nice bright color. And I'm gonna fold that bag over halfway. And this allows me to slide my hand up in there in the fold and I can then manipulate the bag with my fingers. And it's very easy then to use a spatula, spoon, whatever to get your frosting down in there. And doing this makes loading your bags easy, but it also means that when you flip the top portion up, you can see it's free of frosting, which means when I push it down, I'll have a nice clean area there that hopefully won't be flaking any color or anything like that onto my projects as I work. And this will be ready to go. And we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna come back to it when we talk about petal tips. So the first category of tips in this kit would be the rounds. And it's actually a really, really nice selection. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10, weirdly it skips nine, 12 and 2A. So any of the ones with the letter after the number are gonna be a larger size like that big petal tip that will require a larger coupler or you'll just wanna use in the bag. Um, but these little ones like this, you can see the one is the smallest, the 12 has the largest size opening, and the other ones are in between. So I have a couple out here, and I'm gonna use a few of the different sizes to do a few simple techniques so you can see what you can do with these round tips. Because yes, they look really plain, but you can actually accomplish a lot of really basic techniques and work on your skill set with them. So I'm gonna start with just the number 12 tip, and I'm gonna do some dots. 
These are a nice basic technique to help you practice your control. And if you're just starting out, they're a great way to really work on that skill set. So I'm going to get my bag ready with my number 12 tip. And when you pipe a dot, you want to hover above the surface. So it's usually about a little quarter of an inch. And you can see that stream of frosting is connecting. I'm going to squeeze so it balloons out nice and big and full. And then I'm going to stop squeezing and gently circle around on the top. And you can see that kind of shaves the top of that little dot off. And that makes for a nice, smooth, round top. What we're trying to avoid is the Hershey's Kiss. So if you keep squeezing and pull straight up, you get little peaks, right? So they're adorable if that's what you're going for, but not the desired look if you want a nice, smooth finish on top. So again, with the dots, just squeeze, let that frosting balloon out nice and full. Then you want to stop and gently shave it off the top and that'll kind of help shear it off. My buttercream is a little warm today, so it's actually a little easier to do when it's a little cold. The next thing would be lines and lines are a great way to practice your piping in general and work on your control. So if you find things still look a little messy, maybe you're just getting into doing this, working on some lines just on a tray like this is a great way to start. And I'm gonna work as if I'm working on the top of a cake. So I'm gonna hold my bag at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna to touch the surface, right? So just lightly start squeezing and then I'm gonna lift and allow my frosting to drop into place, right? Gravity will do the work and make a nice smooth puffed up full width line for you. And when I'm ready to end, I just want to touch down, stop squeezing, and then lift away. And you can see that gives me a nice clean finish and end to my line. And it's nice, smooth, full, and straight. One thing that happens a lot with beginners is they get a little antsy and you'll start squeezing before you even get near the surface. And that means you have an uncontrolled stream of frosting. So if you start squeezing beforehand, you can see you can't really control where your line goes. Right? And even though it might be straight, the finish and the start are going to be a little wonky and uncontrolled. So if you're still squeezing as you pull away, you see you get these little tails. They start to look like little puppy dogs. Um, anytime you're working with buttercream, you might get pops or breaks in your line just because it's a whipped frosting. So there's going to be air bubbles. Don't sweat those, just fill them back in, right? You can always make nice, neat finishes. And this is one thing, especially with like royal icing cookies, I always tell people to work on first. Get a piece of parchment paper, practice piping lines. Yes, it's boring, but really work on those starts and finishes and really work on allowing the gravity to let that frosting drop into place for you. It'll allow you to really work on your control. And I'll show you what happens if you try to drag. You'll see that you get an uneven, wiggly line that's not smooth, right? It's not thick. I'll show that up there, right? I've been doing this for a very long time. And if I'm scraping across the surface, not even I, after many, many years of doing this, can make a smooth straight line doing that. It's also flattened because the tip is actually digging into the frosting as it's coming out. So if you're working on the top, of a cake or on cookies or anything like that always allow gravity to do the work for you it'll make your work easier and make it look neater okay. so i can change back to my 12 tip and just really quickly do a few quick borders so this is one way to finish off the bottoms of your cake so if you're not yet experienced and you don't get smooth transitions that look like they just magically fade into the cake board yet, don't worry, it takes time, it takes practice. And doing nice big shells with something like a 12 tip will allow you to easily cover up any slight blemishes or irregularities that happen at the bottom of your cakes. So they're really great practice too for consistency and timing. And one thing that's important with shells is to make sure there's enough space between each one so that you really get that nice teardrop shape. If you do them too close together, you're actually doing a bead border. If you're doing them far apart, it doesn't look like a connected row. 
And then you want to make sure that you're working on your timing and your rhythm for when you're squeezing so that you get a nice even row and they look consistent all the way around. I know when I started <laughs> out doing this, I used to start out small and then I'd get all the way back around to the back of the cake and I'd realize I'd gone up significantly in size. So it's one thing to work on, right? Always work on the timing and the consistency. And you can see you can do them really close together and it changes the look. So same technique, but by altering it slightly, we get a whole new look out of the same tip, right? I'm gonna change to a seven tip, so one of the kind of medium size round tips, and I'm just gonna do some scroll work really quickly. And if you're just starting out, I might stay away from the ones and twos unless you really need to do some fine details, but just a little bit. They're much smaller, so it's gonna be harder to control and harder to squeeze, right? So scrolls are a really classic way to finish the side of a cake. And it's just a simple graphic representation, right? A line scrolling one direction and then the other. And you can do them just plain like this, wrap them all the way around the side of a cake. You can do them in different orientations so they cover the entire surface of a tier. And you can start embellishing them. They're a great way to practice piping, especially if you need to start practicing piping on the side of a cake. They're very forgiving and it's very easy to cover up your mistakes and change your pattern so that you can't see any blemishes where maybe you got too close to the surface of the cake. And then you can do things like play around with the size, one small, one large, and add various different filigrees and other simple details just to kind of embellish them, make them slightly more elaborate. They're a great way to add pattern, texture, and interest to the side of a cake. Speaking of the sides of the cake, swags are one thing that you can do there. So I have my little dotted line underneath here. And if we imagine that that's the top edge of my cake, swags are one thing that once you start to get a little more comfortable with lines and other details and working on the sides, you can use gravity. to make beautiful, classic, kind of like retro styled, I feel like very 1950s, 1960s, um, finishes to the sides of cakes, kind of like a nice classic wedding cake. Right, and so just a single line is fantastic, but you can always do things like double up, do three or four, and make more elaborate patterns out of them. And this is a great way to practice your consistency and your control with your piping as well. And then you can do things like add little dots. And add various flourishes. to make them more elaborate, right? And then the last thing I like to do, I'm gonna switch back to my number seven tip and demo some brush embroidery. If you're starting to work on patterns and texture for the side of the cake, but you really don't know what to do, this is a pretty easy technique that just use your round tips. Using a fatter one, like a five or seven, is always a great idea, but you can use it to simulate kind of uh, things like damask silk patterns and other fabric patterns and it's a great way to kind of do tone on tone effects by just building up some beautiful big piped lines and then using either a dry or wet paintbrush depending on what medium you're in. I usually go with a dry one for buttercream to just gently pull that and it gives you the look like a nice embroidered flower pattern. And there's a lot of really great references online for different patterns and things that you can do to kind of create a varied effect. And for a few years now, lace has been really popular and wedding dresses. So I find I've been pulling this out a lot to do detailing on the sides of cakes where people are like, I want something pretty, but I have no idea what I want. 
And I usually end up asking them if they have lace on their dress and showing them something along this lines. Obviously, maybe not in bright blue, but it's a little easier to see here, but it's really beautiful on say a tan or ivory frosting and then done in white. It gives you nice subtle detail and texture that provide interest for the cake without drawing too much attention away. And it looks really fantastic type topped with nice fresh flowers. But since you can do them really big as well, it's a great way to cover surface area on the sides and tops of the cake if you don't know what, don't have any other ideas. Awesome. So I'm going to change back to a smaller tip and just add a quick center on this. But you can see you can create pretty complex and elaborate patterns with brush embroidery. So it's a nice skill to have. And really all you need to do is a few different sizes of different round tips. So it's one of those ones that's really fantastic. And I find I've been using it quite a lot lately. So these are just a few of the different things that you can do with the various round tips that are in this kit. I'm going to take a moment and switch trays and grab a new bag of frosting. And then we're gonna talk about the star tips that come in this kit. Awesome. Thank you. Great. And I'm just gonna take a sip of water really quickly. So star tips are another great easy place to start if you're just getting into decorating. So I like that this set comes with a lot of them. It's going to give you a wide variety of sizes and different styles of openings. So you can create a variety of effects really by just using the same few techniques. And you'll see there's a lot of cute things on tops of cakes where it's like a nice C-shaped uh, or moon-shaped arrangement. And it's just a series of rosettes and stars with a variety of different tips. So having these make it's so easy to make those kind of Pinterest worthy designs uh, that'll really kind of stand out. So I just have some kind of lilac colored buttercream. I made it with my deep pink and my neon bright purple. So just one drop of each in a few ounces of buttercream gave me this nice medium toned lilac. And I'm just going to start maybe with a few of these. So great 14, 16, 18, 21 are all great, nice small star tips. And then you have some slightly larger ones and ones with different openings like 27, 30, 32, 54, and 199, 366, and then 4B is one of those larger decorator sizes. So I'm just gonna demo a couple of these really quickly and I'm gonna start with the 21 because it's probably the one that I use the most often. All right. So when you're making stars, it's really important to make sure that the tip is up off the surface. So just like we did with our dots, you have to give the frosting room to balloon out. So I'm just squeezing, stopping, and pulling away. And that's going to give you a nice full star. If you continue to pipe as you pull up, you will get a nice kind of pointed one. So you'll get that kind of Hershey kiss effect right so little mountains so if i'm looking to make tiny pine trees then this is actually great but if i'm looking to make stars it's not right so if you're getting peaks know that you just need to stop actually squeezing on the bag before you pull away sometimes when we're just beginning the nerves get the best of us and i find it's actually helpful to kind of talk to myself and be like stop squeezing and make sure i actually physically release my hand if you keep squeezing you'll get ruffles Right? So you'll build up a nice ruffly star. So just things to keep in mind. But if you're looking to make like just a nice star border, you just want to make sure you're up off the surface and you just stop squeezing before you pull away. And after lots of practice, it'll just start to happen. It becomes muscle memory. Right? And you'll do, be able to do nice, even, consistent stars all the way. The next thing that you can do with this that kind of builds on those stars is a rosette. It starts as a star, and then we're gonna draw basically a circle around it. So I wanna do, 
type of star in the middle. And then I'm just going to take the tip, rotate it over to the side, so say like a nine o'clock position, if we're thinking about a clock face, circle around to 12, three, and about at six o'clock, I'm gonna to start to taper off my pressure so that by the time I get back to my starting point, I'll have stopped squeezing completely. So it's just one thing to think about. When you get about three quarters of the way around, stop squeezing as hard so that when you pull back to the beginning, you're using nice light pre pressure and you get a nice tapered point there. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna start, pipe a star. I'm gonna keep piping as I swirl around it. Right? And I tapered my pressure off as I got to the end. So you get a nice full swirl there. So one of the great things about this set is it comes with a variety of different tips. So just changing up the tips you're using for these two things will allow you to do a really interesting and beautiful display on the side of a cake without ever even having to pipe a flower, right? So as far as borders go, you can use these to do the classic shell border that you see probably on the bottom of every bakery style cake. And shells are a great place to work on consistency. And once you get them, there's more complicated borders you can do. So there's things like the reverse shell, which combines a rosette and a shell border, right? And then there's also stuff like rope borders and braids. And I'm just gonna do a simple rope here. but just a series of simple C-shaped curves that overlap each other, allow you to make the effect of a twisted rope. And you can use this to do more complicated braids as well. So these tips are really great because you can see if you did this in a nice tan shape, shade, it would actually look like a rope. I'm gonna switch tips and do a few different stars, et cetera, with some of these other ones. So I'm gonna go with my 18 now. So you can see similar shaped opening, it's just a smaller star. And you can use it to do things like smaller rosettes. I then have my number 30 here. And this one, you can see the points on it are actually closed, right? So they're curved in, so it's gonna give you a slightly different feel and it has more points to it. Oh, hold on. I used these a little earlier and it's blocked. That is one thing about using a buttercream that crusts over is sometimes it dries a little bit and you just have to make sure that all of your openings are free. There we go. Back in action, so you can see it gives you a star with more points. Beautiful. And then a beautiful rosette as well. And then maybe one of my favorite star tips, which is the 199. And this one has a ton of tiny points and a nice big opening on it. So you can see it's got all those really, really little tines on it. And I always feel like this one looks like a sea sponge or a sea urchin, and it's great for doing little cactuses and succulents. It makes a beautiful, beautiful star. And then it also does a really gorgeous rosette. And if you stripe your bag, that one always looks a little bit psychedelic, which is awesome. So these are just a few things that you can do and you can practice with the star tips that come in this kit. And I'm going to just change over and do the leaves next. And one thing I like about this set is it gives you both types of leaf tips. And there are some that I refer to as the W-shaped tips and some I refer to as the V-shaped tips or they're more European style leaf tips. Um, but I could show you this one right here. 
We got it. So you can see it has like a W style shaped opening. And one thing to keep in mind with these is that the points can get smashed closed when they're stored. And then it'll give you, instead of a lovely leaf, three separate streams of frosting. If that happens, one thing you might wanna do is make sure that the points are open before you start piping. Or if you start seeing like your leaves are a little funny, make sure that they're actually open because sometimes they can get kind of smashed closed. And the best way to do that is just to take a nice thin decorating spatula, slide it in between that opening and just gently, very gently, you don't wanna open it up too much, rock it back and forth to make sure that those points aren't smashed closed, right? You don't have that problem with the V-shaped ones, but you don't quite have the same definition that you get with the W-shaped ones. So these, this kit comes with 66, 67, 68, 70, 74, which are all the W ones, and then 349, 352, and 366, which are all these V-shaped ones. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. This is our 67. And you can see I just wanna hold it at a 45 degree angle squeeze until my frosting is coming out and then pull as I'm still squeezing. So this is one of the few tips that when we use it, we're actually still gonna be pulling or still be squeezing as we're pulling away because we want it to leave um, that peak of frosting, right? And if your buttercream isn't quite soft enough, Sometimes it doesn't want to give you a nice little peek and you have to kind of go back and close those together, but that just happens, right? So just make sure. You can get a nice little point. So you can do a variety of different sizes and you can even make little variegated leaves with them, right? And you can see that these tips, they give you a nice central line to the leaf, so it really does look like a tiny little leaf. The V-tip ones, although they're easier to use, give you slightly less definition. So that's one of the things, one of the drawbacks, but they're also really easy to use and store, and I never really have to worry about them being funky on me. So a lot of times I tend to want to use these. They also tend to make leaves that are actually a little bit thicker and therefore a little more stable. So I like using them when I'm doing spaces in between, say, flowers for a buttercream flower arrangement because they tend to have nice fat bottoms, so they make sure that they fill up any gaps, right? So anytime you're using these, you wanna hold it at a 45 degree angle, take it and orient it so that one of those points is touching the surface. And that means that your frosting will squeeze out both sides and then you can pull. And you see, I always get a nice point with these, which is one of the reasons I like them, but you get slightly less definition in the middle and you can use it to make a variety of sizes of leaves with even the same tip, just by squeezing harder or lighter you can make them longer and you can make them variegated as well. So you can also do quite a variety, but you can see you get slightly less definition for that central line. And this one, it's like an actual line versus this one where it's more of an indentation. But I get fatter, more stable leaves, and I tend to get a point easier with these. So I like that it has both because it gives you some options on what to use um, and allows you to kind of try them both out in a variety of sizes and pick your own personal preference. So I'm gonna keep my leaf bag here with me because I'm about to do some actual flowers. So we're gonna move on to petal tips and talk a little bit about the different ones that come with this kit and some of the different things that you can do with them. So there are a variety of petal tips in this kit, which is fantastic. You can use them with a flower nail. You don't have to. There's some other things that you can do with them, like ruffles, but you get your 101, two, three, and four, which are all fantastic and good sizes to work with. I work with them a lot. And then you also have some oversized ones, like 125 and 150. So this one is 125. You can see there, it's great for doing big, massive kind of piped buttercream roses for on top of a cake, or even just for covering the entire top of a cupcake, which I think I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna put some of this aside and we'll do a few things over here. So I have just my 101 
and I'll show you some just little ruffles that you can do. And think you can do these as a border on the bottom of a cake. You can use them to actually do ruffle swags, which is fantastic. Or you can use them to basically, if you use some of the larger tips, do ruffles all the way up or down the side of a cake. So it's great for doing like the ombre ruffle buttercream. So you wanna use the fat end towards the top and the skinny end out. And you can see, you can do some nice little ruffles with them. Beautiful, right? So it's like a little ruffled skirt. So if you wanna make little tutus or anything like this, your little petal tips are gonna be fantastic for that. Next thing would be rosebuds. Rosebuds are perfect for the tops of cakes. If you haven't really done a lot of work and you're just getting into doing things with your petal tips and you're maybe not super confident yet and you're not ready to tackle roses, rosebuds are a great way to mark servings on sheet cakes and other things of that nature. And it's a really easy two-step flower. You're gonna pipe a single petal. And then the second one, just by holding that tip to the side, you allow it to curl over because it attaches to the frosting that's already there and rolls over on itself. So it makes that nice rolled curve all by itself, right? So first one, second one, beautiful. It's easy enough to go back, grab my little leaf tip and put some cute little leaves right in there. And then things like sweet peas. Just do a bigger one. Are fantastic as well because they're really expressive, kind of tiny, delicate. You can use similar kind of action as the roses and get a beautiful little sweet pea. And I love doing things like striping the bag for those so you get some nice changes in the color. So then for things like flower petals, um, I think sometimes practicing them actually on a cake is a great idea. So even doing something like a simple light blue cake and just a series of white kind of petals on it so it looks like the flower petals are falling down the side of the cake is a great thing. And the flower petals are really easy to do. You wanna hold your petal tips always so that this thin edge is making the outside of the petal and the fat edge is the center. And basically it's just a kind of U shape. You're basically drawing like an, a curve, an arc, a U shape with the outside edge and kind of pulling that inside back on itself. So pulling it up, spinning it around, pulling it down makes a nice flower petal. So you can see these kind of teardrop shaped petals. So you can practice individual petals first, or you can go straight to your flower nail and actually piping. So when you're using your flower nail, if you haven't done it before, a good thing to do is actually practice using the flower nail with your non-dominant hand while not holding a bag of frosting. It's a little tricky, right? So think about like, you're trying to pat your head and rub your stomach, it takes a little practice. If you hold this and just practice spinning it and pushing it towards your fingertips, for a couple of minutes before you start trying to pipe and spin it at the same time, that's probably gonna be great. That means you'll be less focused on controlling this because you'll already be comfortable with it when you start going to pipe and you can really focus on your piping. So when you're doing this, if you take your hand and you look at the second joint, right, in your middle finger and just line the nail up with that, and then you're going to put your thumb on it and you're gonna use your thumb to push it all the way to your fingertips and then roll it back to retract it and push it again. So you wanna make sure that you're really comfortable with this motion 
and you have a nice amount of control. So you can control the speed at which you're turning it because you'll need to adjust the speed based on your frosting and what you're doing and what tips you're using. So having good control with your nail is gonna be key before you actually go into piping with it. Um, and so for me, I'm right-handed, so I use my left hand for my nail. So I'm less skilled with my left hand, so making sure I practice with this first is really important. Anytime you're gonna use paper on your nail, I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of buttercream to attach a nice little square of parchment paper. And then I can use any of my petal tips to start piping flowers, right? So I'm just gonna pipe a quick rose. Beautiful, right? It's really easy once you get the hang of it. And it's, you're using the turning in one direction while piping in the other, right? So I'm spinning to the left while I'm pulling my bag to the right um, to apply that frosting on the outside edge nice and smoothly. So you're using that direction, turning the nail the opposite direction to help you apply the frosting to the outside. So in addition to doing things like roses, you can also use these tips to make a wide variety of other flowers. So they make great little daisies. And this is just a very simple, let's start, let the frosting balloon out, and then just pulling towards the center. And these are great flowers to start with. If you think roses might be too daunting, take too many steps, you don't have the control yet because it's just a single stroke and you just give a small rotation. Single stroke, small rotation. So you don't actually have to turn the nail while you're working. It's in between each petal, which means it's a little bit easier. Finish it off with a nice dot and we have a beautiful flower to go on top of a cake or a cupcake. And if you're using f your flower nail and you're piping on parchment, you can set them out on trays and then put them in your fridge or freezer so that they firm up nicely and then are easy to handle. You can then use either a spatula or a flower lifter to lift them off the paper and place them perfectly on your cakes where you want them to go because they'll be firm and easy to handle. The other tip I'm going to use, and I'm gonna do it on a cupcake, is the 125. So this big boy, is a petal tip and I'm just gonna use my cupcake as if it's my flower nail. And I love that this kit comes with these oversized ones because it gives you fun large ones to practice with. And you can see this flower petal tip will give you really big, really beautiful roses really quickly and it's a great way to make big flowers for the tops of your cakes or to cover the entire surface of a cupcake really quickly. And then you can use your trusty leaf tips to put in a few quick leaves. So it's a great solution for beautiful cupcakes, say for Mother's Day, which is coming up if you wanna give it a try, always fun. Right, so that's some of the stuff that you can do with the petal tips that come in this kit. And the next thing we're gonna talk about if this seems too difficult are the uh, flower, actual drop flower tips, which are a little bit easier to use if you're just getting started. Right, so drop flower tips are ones I always forget I have on hand, even though they're fantastic. And there's a few in there, so 107, 109, 129, 131, 124, and then the 2D one. And so they come, obviously, I'm gonna use the 2D one, which is the decorator one, uh, the decorator size, so it's bigger than the standard size. So I've just got it in a bag ready to go, and I'm gonna use it like that. But they also come with the smaller ones, which are most of these, that you can use with couplers. And they achieve the same effect, and you can use them the same way. So let's get this started. 
These are a little different than the star tips that we were using in that you actually want to touch the tip to the surface. Although note, I'm using this without a coupler, so only touch lightly. If you whack it on the surface of your cake or your tray, you're going to knock your tip back up into your bag. And then when you squeeze, it's going to be a whole mess of frosting and it's going to be really uncontrolled and take a while to clean up, right? So you just want to touch lightly on the surface. So just resting there, squeeze until we get nice frosting and then stop when it's still nice and straight and pull away. And you can see that it leaves us with a nice little void in there. And that's the perfect spot to put in a little dot and finish off our flower. If I continue to squeeze, I'll get a ruffled petal, right? Still have a nice little center void. And I can also use them to make actual flowers that look like they've been piped on a flower nail. And I'm gonna do this instead of holding my wrist the way I normally would in a nice relaxed position by twisting it right around. And then I'm going to squeeze and then move my wrist. So just a little quarter of a turn into its more relaxed position. And you can see then I get a nice six petal flower that looks like I've piped six petals on my flower nail, but instead I just turned my wrist. So these are really easy. And if you're not quite to the point where you have the control and you can use your flower nail yet and you don't have that confidence, these are a great way to pipe flowers and you can even do them on the flower nail or do them on parchment like this ahead of time, put them in the fridge and then place them on your cake. And it's a little bit easier to master if you're not quite there yet with your piping skills. The key here is you have to start turning your wrist as you start piping so that it has that nice little sweeping motion. But you can make several different flowers with the same tip, right? So just a star one, a ruffled, and then the little twist one that looks like a piped one. Same tip, same buttercream, three different flowers. So you can imagine if you have a couple of these, you could load up different colors, do different styles of flowers, and you can actually make a varied presentation with just this tip. And one person asked in our last live about making roses with it, and I didn't quite connect it. And I think what they were talking about is you can use it to make a rosette. So especially if you want to finish like the tops of cupcakes really easy, but maybe the piped rose I did before in pink is too much. And you're like, she's crazy if she thinks I can do this. Um, this is a great way. So think back to when we had our star tips out and we did a rosette. You can literally use this tip to draw a rosette and it'll look like a nice little ruffly rose. So you want to squeeze till you get a nice frilly star, pull it out, and then just wrap it all the way around. Start tapering off my pressure. So I pull it to a nice peak and you can see you get a nice ruffly flower-esque looking rosette there. And then if I just finish it off with two little leaves, it looks exactly like a little flower, right? So it gives you that nice floral look. So if you start out with the 125 tip and you decide that making actual roses is too much, Pulling out that 2D tip will allow you to make nice kind of ruffly rosette roses that look beautiful as well. And sometimes when people are just starting out, I say, you know, don't do too much of one thing. Like if you pipe a couple of roses and you feel like you had enough practice, you can always switch over to the rosettes if you're running out of time or you feel hurried. And you can make yourself a nice varied presentation actually by mixing it up and doing more than one thing. So those are a nice little trick to have in the bag as well. So I'm gonna switch over to talking about some of the specialty tips and the uh, other ruffle tips that come in this. And this is kind of our last category. Thanks. So there's a bunch of specialty tips that come in here. There's things like 2B, 47, 44, which are basket weave tips. Uh, there's a couple in the 80s that are like this one, 81. It's actually for use on your flower nail and you can see it's U-shaped. It's for making things like dahlias and chrysanthemums. So it's a great one to have on hand. And then there's the 233, which is your grass tip, right? So it's just got a whole bunch of little tiny openings on there. Sorry. And I'm gonna make sure that it's freed up. Oh, there we go. Lots of little tiny openings and it makes 
kind of like grass kind of fur deal that's fantastic. So if you have tiny people in your household that are a fan of say things like Cookie Monster or Sesame Street characters and you need to make furry things, this is a great way to do it. Uh, it does tend to clog some easier than some of the other ones. So I always make sure I have a little toothpick on hand and I can just free up those little holes. And some days it cooperates more than others. But I'm using a American style or simple buttercream so it crusts a little bit. So when they sit for a tiny bit, these tiny holes do tend to get just a little bit clogged. So just keeping a toothpick on hand to make sure that you can free it up is a good idea. So anytime you're working, you want to make sure, yep, all my little holes are flowing freely. And this grass tip is a really easy one to use too. So if you want to have a project where you're like, I need to work on my control a little bit, this is it. Because if you're a little out of control, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to look like grass. You want to hold it just above the surface so that those little lines can come out and attach. And then you want to pull up while you're still piping. And depending on how far away you hold it, how far up you pull, how hard you're squeezing, how quickly you pull away, you can change it from being kind of short, even, and controlled to, let's see, really like fine turf if you're trying to make like a little golf course that you want to make different lengths. So you can go really short, a little higher, and you can also do kind of build up to some kind of furrier and longer stuff. So if you start with concentric circles and you go shorter on the outside, you can actually build it up so that those outside areas support longer and longer strands. So this grass tip is fantastic for making a variety of different things, whether it's actu actual grass, kind of wetlands looking stuff, short little stuff if you're doing some golf themed or soccer, football, whatever themed cakes. And then also things like shad cakes have been big where they're just loading up different ver varied colors of buttercream and just doing this little grass technique all over the sides of cake. So it just looks like a furry little, little cake, but also for making things like little monster cakes. So anytime you need fur, it's a perfect, perfect one to go to because you get lots of little fine strands really quickly and easy and you can vary up the length based on how hard and fast you pull away. There's also a variety of ruffle tips in here. So 86, 100, 340, 353, and 402. Those are basically a petal tip and a star tip combined. So it's if you went in and did a ruffle border with a petal tip and then went on top of it with a star. So it's usually a star with one longer opening and that'll provide you with a ruffle. So if you're gonna do a lot of stuff into the like 1950s style wedding cakes with really traditional piping, that's a good set to explore with. I misplaced some of mine because I don't use them as often because I don't get requests for those kinds of cakes, but they're really fun to play with as well. So it has a lot of different things, but probably the thing that I think should get used more but doesn't are the basket weave tips. So I'm gonna pull a couple of those over and talk about them. And there's a big one, a 2B, and then there's also a 44 and a 47. And the basket weave tips, or ribbon tips as they're called, have these kind of little straight rectangular openings. And sometimes they're smooth on both sides, but sometimes they have a little comb on one side, right? So kind of like the little points on a star tip. And you can use this to your advantage because then you can use it to create differences in texture. You can do part of your basket weave smooth and another part with the textured rib. And I'm just gonna set up a little basket weave here and start doing one, right? So all basket weaves first are gonna start with a vertical line up the side of your cake. And then think about it like drawing a T, you're gonna draw a horizontal line across the top. And then you have to decide whether you want this to be a loose basket weave or a tight one. If you're tight, you really wanna pay attention to that spacing and get really close in.
But if you're gonna go a little looser like I am, I left a little extra room. So there'll be a little bit of the background color of the cake showing through. And that's up to you, right? And once we get our kind of little fence post style slats across there, you wanna go ahead and do another vertical line across the ends of those. And then we're gonna fill in in between. And eventually, as you keep going, it'll give you the illusion that the pattern is weaving in and out on itself. And it's a great way to cover the side of the cake and add a little texture and interest, but you don't necessarily have to do it in a bright color. It's great just white on white, ivory, tan, whatever, and you can top a cake off with flowers on top and it makes for a lovely presentation especially for holidays like Mother's Day that are coming up. And you can always do more complex patterns as well but this is just kind of a classic traditional basket weave and it's a good place to start. And so as you keep going around your cake, typically what would happen is you meet up with the beginning, you fill that in and you have a nice flush finish and it just looks like a beautiful kind of never ending pattern that spirals all the way around your cake. So that covers all the major groups of tips that are in this kit. And I think it's a fa fantastic one. Even if you already own some of them, a lot of these tips having doubles of is never a problem. Like I always have I never have enough 104 tips for petal tips. I never have enough small ones, twos, and threes. So if you already have some things, these are ones that if you ended up doubling up on any of them, it would probably end up being really useful. So it's fantastic. And it's a good selection across the major groups and types for any beginner. And it comes with some bonus things like the couplers, the flower nails, and the storage case that make it a really great buy. And if you're thinking about this and you're just getting into decorating, having some stuff like liquid gel colors that you can use to get nice, bright, vibrant colors is fantastic. Buying things like the disposable decorating bags that we've been using, they're just the 12 inch size and having those on hand so you don't have to do lots of washing and potentially investing in some extra couplers so that you can do jobs with more than just two colors at a time are always a great idea. We hope everybody enjoyed this and I don't know if we have any questions. Tom hasn't said anything. Nope. Awesome. But we're going to end there for now. We will be back with more another day.